David Hart is best described as an action painter whose strongly knifed works are remarkably defined and delicate. As paint is spilled over surfaces and splashed about, this creates energy, texture and life with each explosion of colour. He's an explorer who isn't afraid to investigate new techniques. It's these discoveries that fuel David's passion for his art. David's studio and head office is located on his 1.5 acre luxury estate on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. His creative passion has flowed through to the design of the gardens, magnificent home and state-of-the-art studio and offices. David believes that excellence is something that should shine through every aspect of his business and lifestyle. David's creative space is an environment where his techniques and creativity can be fully unleashed without boundary or constraint. The floors, walls and easels of David's studio are an evident reminder of his unrestrained exploration into new techniques and styles. He comes from a great heritage, with his famous father being the late Pro Hart MBE who was one of the most loved and collected artists in Australian history. Prior to my dad passing away, we discovered that he had motor neuron disease, so I realised I only had very limited time to spend with him. I spent the last three months with my dad before he died putting together a biography on his life and art. And I guess spending that time with him really helped me to discover how much he'd influenced my own life and art. For me, I think the driving message behind the book is how Ordinary people can be inspired to do extraordinary things with their own life. I think in total the biography took me about 19 months to complete after Dad passed away, but it went on to become a bestseller. I think when you gain an insight into Pro Hart's life, you really gain an insight into my life because I grew up with him, and also into the influences behind my art. And it was back in 99 that ABC's Australian Story approached me to put together a documentary on this stage of my life. A lot of artists could say, I'll sit in my garage and you know, just paint because I'm an artist and I'll struggle. Well, good on you if you want to do that, but I've got a family to support and I'm out there to work hard and to market myself well and, you know, I want to, I want to be a success at what I do. It took a lot to really get people to notice me uh, in that they, every time I went to a gallery or tried to put stuff in somewhere, People would say, oh, yeah, you know, we'll take a few of yours, but you know, can we get your dad's stuff? And so like all the time you knew that people were, were using you to get to your dad and it was really frustrating because I, I was saying, you know, what about me, you know, here I am. Well, I might be a bit biased in thinking that he, he'll be as famous as his father, but I think he'll be more famous. I think um, Pro didn't really start painting full time until he was 35, uh, but David's only 26 and has already um, run off his feet in the demand on his work. I think David does have something to prove to his father. I think he wants to just show his dad that he can make it, that he has become a successful artist and he's always trying to please his dad. I noticed David's uh, getting interested in art when he was four because he'd, uh, he went through one of my murals with a, with a burnt sienna on a brush and went right along the 15 foot painting or whatever length it was, 12 foot or something and used the right colour, I said, this bloke's got, got a heart in him, because he had the right colour. As far as professional training goes, I, like, I've never been to art school or anything like that, but I suppose I really grew up in an art school. Outside my bedroom, where I grew up, for example, was uh, etching of Rembrandt's Descent from the Cross, and um, there's Picasso's, and. Salvador Dali, Monet, you know, the house is just filled with such amazing art. Because Dad was so famous and so busy, he was so consumed with his art. 
I did feel at times that um, that I, I felt a little bit ignored at times because sometimes I felt that the painting came first a bit. For me, it was really important, I believe, to leave Broken Hill in that Dad's sort of dynasty is out there and all my other brothers and sisters, they're sort of painting the Broken Hill type themes. Bit of a creak down there. You know, it can be a bit competitive in that we're all sort of painting similar subjects and trying to sort of stick out from one another and, and be individual was difficult. I know about that place. Tell me when I can. Okay. For me, it was good to come to Brisbane and show people that I was different. I wasn't just another heart kid. Oh, well, let's see if you Where's the Dad's a funny guy. Like he's, uh, I'll tell him something that I've done, and he'll say, oh, you know, that's fantastic. Your brother's doing something, or your sister's doing something, and he'll tell me something exciting they're doing. But when he gets off the phone, he'll be just raving to everyone what I've been doing, but like he's sort of not telling me about it. But I know he's really proud. There it is. Well, he's got the gift of painting, but he's got different styles, different technique. He's an experimenter. That's coming up good, isn't it? Yeah, that's a uh, picnic in the creek. It's looking good. Throw the dog in with the sausages. Oh, yeah, the dog's nicked the sausages and he's taken them. The snags. Yeah, he can put the paint on with a boom and front end loader. He puts it on thick. You know, and that's good. That's what art's all about, I reckon. You've got to express yourself, take no notice of anybody else, chuck the paint on and be confident and it goes in the right direction. I think it is a bonus having the heart name. Uh, people do take a second look at your paintings, um, but I think that in the end, people have got to like your art, and if you can't paint, you know, you're not going to last long. Glad it's over. Can you relax now? I reckon. While David is one of Australia's top selling artists, his art has been purchased by collectors from all over the world and is found in many celebrity art collections, including Donald Trump, Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban, the former Australian Prime Minister John Howard, Lord Earl Spencer and many others. During the London Olympics, David was commissioned to create an inspirational piece of art alongside two of the greatest Olympians to ever represent Australia, Jeff Hugel and Cathy Freeman. The event produced massive media exposure and now his painting has officially become part of the Olympic Committee art collection and will continue to motivate our next generation of Olympians. There's just nothing better than seeing a concept become a reality and that's one of the things I like about working with Maxwell and Williams. One of my first projects with Maxwell and Williams was flowers. Who would have known right from the beginning that this would become one of our most famous projects? It's extended into a wonderful range of mugs and platters. What impresses me is the thought that goes behind the design of each project that they do. Every concept is like a seed that grows into a whole range of product ideas. Together with Maxwell and Williams, we've been able to create some very unique concepts, from flowers to waltzing Matilda, and most recently, an inspirational series based on my Olympic artwork. Since being invited to represent Australia at the Florence Biennale in Italy, David's popularity has continued to soar internationally. I had an understanding right from the beginning that in order to get recognised, I really needed to align myself with high profile brands. I really think that the key to the success of the exhibitions was that they had a really strategic focus, a strong theme and a purpose. There was a reason that we joined together at that time to run the exhibition. I've had the privilege of working with some amazing global brands some of these collaborations have been with Hilton, Sheraton, Marriott, the a a Hotel Group, Mercedes-Benz, B&W and Porsche. I never underestimate the power of association. These collaborations have been a key part in my journey as an artist and in making people aware of who I am and what I do. One of my most recent collaborations was with Norman's Wines. David has collaborated over 100 years of family heritage along with Norman's Wines to create the ultimate masterpiece, Norman's Heart Series Special Edition. 
Complementing the Heart Series wines is a range of designer giftware inspired by the Dragonfly series that exposes the continual evolution of style and technique. These images remain among the most identifiable of David Hart's work. David's endless search for new methods of application has been seen throughout every series. Continuously experimenting with new techniques has enabled David to push the boundaries of his art so wide that it often leads to new discoveries, sometimes completely by accident. In David's own words, experimentation is the greatest teacher. Everything I've learned, I've learned through discovery. The early stages of that discovery can be seen in his first series, The Outback, where his career as an artist began at just 16 years of age. David had a passion and desire to paint the environment where he lived, the outback mining town of Broken Hill. Each painting absorbs the rich colors and depth of the Australian landscape while exploring his passion for history, folklore, and observations of Australian life. The Flower series takes on ever-evolving textures featuring David's unique application of color utilizing a variety of painting implements like palette knives, household scrubbing brushes and tubes drilled with holes. The Beach series began after the Hart family moved up to the Queensland coast. David continues to paint expressions of his surrounding environment. These beach scenes are both romantic and realistic observations of Australian life at the beach. The Black Dog series of paintings were inspired by cast off paint from David's easel and palette. He would literally scrape the paint onto a palette knife and energetically flick it onto the canvas, creating a vibrant mix of color and texture. The Dragonfly series has become one of David's signature styles. David feels like he is honoring his father by continuing this family tradition and has adapted new techniques to allow these images to evolve into his own personal expression. Each dragonfly has its own character, and with each level of glazing, David keeps his father's secret painting techniques alive. These highly sought after pieces represent new life, friendship, good luck and prosperity. Depicting the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, this series utilizes the glazing technique to create deep tones and highlights, giving the painting incredible depth. Each painting is an expression of David's faith that captures this part of world history for all to see, believe and understand. Every work in the Inspiration series has an energy behind it. Unlike anything David has painted before, This series was birthed out of the Olympic Games artwork as David drew on all the excitement and adrenaline of the Olympics and translated that onto the canvas. David's upcoming series, entitled The Arrival Series, reveals Australian history in a way that has never been seen before. This body of work is considered by David to be his most controversial and significant to date. This exhibition is part of an ongoing journey to illustrate the history of Australia and spirit of its people. As I began researching for the Arrival series, I discovered a side to Australian history that I never knew, perhaps one of our darkest, most shameful secrets. This is one of history's greatest untold wars. It was an invasion that almost completely wiped out the traditional owners of this land and destroyed life as they knew it. The series consists of 48 paintings. Now they each tell a story of a significant point in early Australian history. It follows the hardships and displacement of the Indigenous Australians and focuses on their heroes, the ones who chose to rise up against the onslaught of British invaders. The power and the emotion behind this imagery is what pulls the viewer into the story behind the painting. I want to take them on their own journey of discovery and reveal a truth that's been hidden from our history books for hundreds of years. Before I start each painting, I need to immerse myself in the story. That means taking myself to that same place and time. I need to feel the emotion of the moment. Then I can recreate that on canvas. Otherwise, these paintings will fail to bring justice to the story that's being told. That's what makes this series so powerful. 
From the arrival of Cook to the clearing of tribal land to unthinkable brutality. This exhibition is about remembering. Remembering the past, learning from it, but not living in it. Aboriginal culture is a backwards and forwards culture. It's about going back to the past, learning from the traditional elders and bringing that wisdom into the present. In order to raise awareness for the arrival series, I donated a 1.2 by 2.4 metre mural to Queensland's Parliament. This was officially accepted by the Minister for Cultural Affairs, the Honourable Glen Elms MP. You know, I just think having this painting uh, here to hang in uh, Queensland's Parliament House uh, is, a, is a wonderful thing from the point of view of the history of our state uh, and where we're going and the fact that it depicts uh, in a very positive way the first interactions between Europeans when they came in this case to Queensland and to uh, our Indigenous people is a very important thing. As I understand it this is painting 49 in the Arrival series and it yeah. sort of encapsulates uh, the work that you've done in the first 48 so and everyone goes about teaching and informing in a different way. Yeah. You do it by virtue of, uh, of, of your magnificent art. Uh, I go into Indigenous communities all over Queensland and I meet uh, young men and young women, some of them much older than that, uh, who have no idea who their, their father was, yeah. they have no idea where they're from, their country, um, in communities that have been pushed together with the best intentions in the world from you know days past but communities that have just been pushed together uh, with no little or no sense of identity. So we've got to do a lot more to bridge that gap uh, to not only be able to tell Indigenous people who they are but to tell white Australians who Indigenous people are, because we don't teach that either. And this is a great way through the, the brush in your hand uh, to start a process like this. We as the government, the education system, and, those, and, and all of the volunteer groups that are out there need to start doing a lot more in terms of that instruction uh, and that education process. I'd like to thank you and Christine for donating the piece to the Parliament House uh, and I just think it's a great thing to have here and I really want to thank you for, 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 for bringing it down and donating it to us. In 2012 I was invited to attend a delegation tour of Asia with the Lord Mayor of Brisbane, Graham Quirk. We visited Taiwan, Japan, China and South Korea. Now as a result of that delegation tour, I have some significant opportunities to expand internationally over the coming years. This includes cultural exhibitions in some of the best fine art museums in the Asia Pacific region. I'm really excited about some of the great opportunities ahead to share about our Australian history, our culture, as well as being, I think, a significant stepping stone into the next phase of my life and my work.